This video is sponsored by Infinity Kingdom. Today, I want to dive deeper into the topic of growing your march. In the specific, how can you do the best you can with the resources you have and use them efficiently to grow your main immortals? You want to watch this video until the end because I have some very good tips for you. Let's get started. Hello Infinity Kingdom players and welcome back to our weekly video on our progression in server 136 for the Revival of Cities event. Before getting started, if you feel like joining us, I remember we are in Vitas, so the green faction, server 136, Alliance EW, Immortal Warriors. The link to download the game will be, as always, in the description of this video and in the pinned comment. So here's the thing. You are new in Infinity Kingdom, or you have played it from time to time, and you haven't still figured out why some of your Alliance members, even being free to play or very light spenders, have a better march than you do. Sure, sometimes at the beginning, the strength of a march can be influenced by how early you can pull the immortals you need in the Hall of Immortals. But after a while, that doesn't count much anymore. You can always use alternative immortals in your march for a while until you obtain the epic immortals you need. See, there is a function here in Infinity Kingdom that is very free-to-play friendly, and it's called Immortal Reborn. If you go over to your Alchemy Lab and click on Immortal Reborn, you will be able to literally reset every resource you have invested on your Immortals. I have already used it on my S136 account, so let me go over to my other account to show you. So here I am on my Server 40 account, and let's say that I want to reset my Leonidas in my Earth March because I want to make space for Charles, let's say Charles. What I need to do is to remove Leonidas from my March, go over to the Alchemy Lab and to the Immortal Reborn page, and here I will be able to reset the Immortal to level 1, 0 stars, 0 boosts. This function gives us back literally 100% of the resource invested, including the Immortal Fragments, which you will be able to sell for Soul Crystals, so nothing goes to waste here, and even the EXP rolls. And those EXP rolls will include all the EXP you acquired by fighting gnomes on the field. In fact, I have published a very popular Infinity Kingdom video a few months ago, where I described a trick where you can use your Stronger March to power up your low-level Immortals without having to use them on the field. It's very effective and I suggest to check that video out, you will find the card up on the top. This all to say that you don't need to be afraid to use lower tier immortals in your march temporarily, like for example I have used Isabel of Castile for a while in my earth march because you will be anyway able to reset them back to zero. So tip number one, use always the best immortals available in your lineup, among the ones you have. If you can power them up, do that. If you find the fragments in the market, even if that's an immortal you will not use in the long run, buy the fragments as long as they are not for gems. Buy them for soul crystals, because you will get anyway 100% of the soul crystals back. Tip number two, focus on one march only, at least at the beginning. Especially if you are a free-to-play player or a low spender, you must focus your energies and invest your resources on one single march. Do not worry about having a march to garrison, because if a stronger player wants to teleport you away, he or she will be able to do that regardless of your march garrisoning. Actually, you will lose more troops if you bother garrisoning, so make a plan about the immortals you need to unlock and the march you need to power up, see where you can unlock them and start working on them right away. If you want to power up another march, just for gathering purposes, so you have more load to gather resources on the map, I just suggest to increase the level of the immortal about to level 10-15, because those levels are very cheap anyway. And this leads us to tip number 3. Level your immortals up equally. Do not use all of your EXP rolls on one single immortal and neglect the other ones. As you can see, all of my Earth immortals on my main march are level 33. Having a weak link in your team means that your march will be weaker overall. It's better to have 4 immortals at level 30 than 1 at level 35 and all the others at level 20. About this tip, I have something important to tell you. There are two main sources of experience to level up your immortals. First the gnomes and then the well of time. Let's focus on the gnomes. This is pretty straightforward. If you're not saving AP points, action points for an imminent war, you should always spend your AP points on gnomes if you have the troops to do that. I have full AP points, as you can see from the top left part of the screen, so I will proceed in killing gnomes as soon as I can. And this leads me to tip number four. 
make sure to have all the good talents assigned, which you can check by clicking your avatar on the top left part of the screen and clicking on talents. Do you see this number below your avatar on the top left? That's your Lord level. You can level up your Lord level by completing missions, quests and generally being active on the game. Every level will give you one talent point, which you can assign in different ways. You have two branches of talents the development talents and the military talents. You have also three presets that you can save and use to switch very fast among your preferences. In fact, I have two main presets, development and PvP. When I am fighting against other players, I use the second tree, where I picked up all kinds of useful military buffs. While when I'm developing my city, upgrading my buildings and fighting gnomes on the map, I use these presets all in on development talents. In particular, on the way there, I picked up experience right here, which gives me 100% bonus EXP when fighting gnomes, up to four of them in storage with six hours cooldown, which means that every six hours you will get one point back. Then I picked up the vine walker, which increases my march speed by 50%, but mostly reduces my AP cost to zero when attacking. And you could very well pick up this other one called Pleasant Surprise, which gives you double engine stones when you kill gnomes to level up your equipment faster, if you need that more, of course. And then it's crucial you pick up Safe and Sound, which literally grants your troops an immunity for the battle where you use this talent, meaning your troops will not die when fighting gnomes. I personally use this talent to kill the stronger gnomes in order to maximize my EXP gain and have literally zero troops die. While I normally will not spend AP on gnomes of that level, because the losses would be too many. The development talents are important for other reasons as well, like increasing the building upgrade speed, or the gold production, or the research speed, and more. So make always sure that you put these talents to a good use daily and spend your AP to make your march stronger. Tip number 5. Level your boost level equally. Do you see this number on the side of the name of your immortal? That's your boost level, which is granting you a variety of bonuses according to the level. As you can see, all of my four immortals in my main march are at plus 14, and it's very important you work on this. To boost your immortals, you will need to acquire a certain number, grade and type of materials, depending on the boost level, and you will find all of those materials in the Well of Time, which is a quest campaign system where you need to defeat the NPCs in order to clear the stage and go to the next. The Well of Time is also a great source of EXP, so I feel obliged to tell you how to clear a stage more efficiently. If you're losing a certain stage, it can be for two reasons. First, your march is not strong enough. Two, you are using your auto fight in the wrong way. So it's not necessarily because of your march being weak, but it can also be because you are using a wrong strategy. Let's make an example. Now I am at chapter 11, stage 1. All of the stages are made of two or three rounds, depending if there is a final city siege or not. The first one is always weaker, because there is no dragon helping the enemy mortals, so it's important you deactivate the auto fight right away. Otherwise, you will just waste your dragon skills on the weaker target. You fire off your skills manually by clicking the immortal icons when the mana reaches the top, and if the first target is low in health, make sure not to waste the skill. Like in this case, I did not fire off Alexander's skill since the target had less than 10% health remaining. Instead, I preserved my skill for the next round. Here you could theoretically activate the auto fight unless there is a dragon skill you want to use first, because the auto fight will essentially fire off your dragon skill in order, the first and then the second, and will also fire your immortal's active skill as soon as they are available. Just apply these few tips and you will see that you will be able to clear some stages that you normally would not be able to clear with the auto fight mode. Tip number six, make sure to have all of your immortals equipped with the highest tier equipment you can drop from the gnomes and level the equipment up equally among your immortals in steps of plus five. Oh, ho, weak, go back, one step at a time. Where can I drop equipment? Easy, you can drop equipment from gnomes. Different levels and type of gnomes will drop different pieces of equipment. The higher is the level, the higher the class of equipment dropped will be. Trint will drop helmets and weapons, Bakan will drop armors and weapons, and Rock will drop accessories and weapons. Essentially, all three types of gnomes can drop weapons, and one other piece according to the gnome you are killing. It's important you also know that each gnome has an element. That is why you will be able to kill some easily, and others you will kinda struggle. Once you dropped the equipment you needed, 
equip them on your immortals and level them up using the engine stones, which you will also drop from gnomes in steps of plus 5, plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, plus 20, etc. This because every 5 levels you will get a plus 1 resonance, which will give you extra buffs. For example, all the pieces on my Charles are plus 25, so I have plus 5 resonance. If just one of the pieces were to be plus 24, I would have had just plus 4 resonance instead of plus 5. That's why you should level them up equally. It's important you do your very best and take care of your main march, because war is coming and the green alliances will very soon clash against the blue alliances. The Japanese players have literally been ruling the entire server, even if the game has literally been available for 20 days to them. The first alliance in the server, 404, is almost full Japanese. AOFM, Attack of Max, is full Japanese. Vuln is almost all Japanese. There is a high Japanese presence. And CHN, which we will probably fight in the next few days, is a mix of Japanese and Chinese players. CHN and Vuln literally grew overnight and they are scary beasts right now. And I'm sure we will clash against them in the upcoming Contentions of Relics, which will open up in the next few days. And I will speak more about it in detail in the next video. Also, I'm sure we will have a hard time against against the strong Japanese alliances when we will have to capture the level 7 provincial capitals. So if you want to stay up to date, you can do something. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bells for notifications so you don't miss out on all the bloody wars to come on this server. And if you feel like joining us, I remember we are in Vitas Server 136 Alliance EW Immortal Warriors. The link to download the game will be, as always, in the description of this video and in the first comment. Thank you for being here and I will see you on the next one. Ciao!